After early success against COVID-19, Hong Kong's leader Carrie Lam has warned the territory is on the verge of a large-scale coronavirus outbreak and that a new wave of infections could overwhelm hospitals. Hong Kong has for the past week reported more than 100 new infections each day. The death of a 75-year-old woman on Wednesday has taken the number of people who have died to 24 and 17 of them were in July. In a recorded message, Carrie Lam also asked people to stay at home. Fellow citizens, Hong Kong is facing a new wave of COVID-19 infections. With an upsurge in locally infected cases, many with yet unknown sources. We are on the verge of a large-scale community outbreak. I appeal to you to follow strictly the social distancing measures and stay at home as far as possible. If we stand united and work together, we can suppress this epidemic again. Carrie Lam there. Our correspondent in Hong Kong, Martin Yip, says most people are complying with these new rules on social distancing and also wearing masks in public. Many people are complying with it, but there are also people complaining that when you issue all these warnings and all these measures, why don't you just shut down the border and stop people from coming in? Because uh, uh, the argument uh, some people believe is, is all about these uh, incoming people, which are still we still have quite some people coming in, flying into Hong Kong, shipping into Hong Kong. And there's been an argument also about why were there some um, unexplained cases? Where did they, those cases come from? Uh, but just um, a few days ago, the Polytechnic University of Hong Kong, there's a few scientists who've tried to analyze uh, the genes of virus found on some imported cases, mainly seamen and uh, air crew members. Uh, and compare them to some local cases that went unexplained, and they ended up finding some connection between the two. So there's an argument uh, still going on on whether Hong Kong should actually shut down the border and when uh, and go into some kind of a lockdown like what you've seen in earlier months in New Zealand, Australia, or in the European countries, or even in the UK. Let's take you to India now. More than half the number of people living in Mumbai's slums could have had coronavirus. That's according to a new survey. The comparable figures for those living outside the slums in the same areas were much lower. These figures come from antibody tests on 7,000 people in a slum area. To remind you, India has the third highest number of infections in the world, more than one and a half million cases. Over 34,000 people have died from COVID-19. Straight to Delhi, and our correspondent there, Arunade Mokoji, joins us from there. This is an interesting survey, the one done in Mumbai. Tell us more about it. Well, uh, essentially, it was conducted on 7,000 individuals. And what it has done is it has found that uh, one in every six individuals has uh, believed to have co contracted coronavirus uh, in the cities. But what is more alarming is that the, in the slum clusters, uh, that figure is about 57%, according to this research. Now, this is extremely significant because the, out of the entire population of Mumbai, 65% of that population lives in these slum clusters where it is impossible to follow social distancing norms because for every basic need, you have to go out of your house even stand in queues for daily water supply, and even use public utilities. Uh, so that is uh, the biggest uh, challenge. But what scientists are saying is perhaps this could lead to the prospect of the city going towards some form of herd immunity because off late, Mumbai has seen a slowing down of cases. Nearly 717 cases were reported yesterday in the last 24 hours, which is the lowest in the last three months. So scientists are encouraged. However, they still remain skeptical. Arunade, do we have exact figures of how many people have become very unwell from coronavirus in the slums or who have died? Well, what is, uh, what is encouraging is that one in every two to 3,000 individuals has reported, uh, uh, deaths have been reported. So the mortality rate continues to be very low. So that is certainly an encouraging signal. And even as experts and scientists base this on uh, uh, various uh, surveys that they have conducted, they do say that these antibodies, which they were initially trying to assert, uh, ascertain in these tests, uh, are, are only last, are only prevalent in the bloodstream for 90 days. So they're essentially not as powerful to beat the coronavirus in the first case. So yes, there are points of, uh, of, of uh, there are positive signals really coming out, but uh, there, are, there are equal cause for concern because India is reporting nearly 50,000 cases every day and scientists and experts say that very soon India could very well uh, you know, surpass Brazil and also the US in the next couple of weeks.
How many people across the country do adhere to all of the guidelines, social distancing and wearing masks, or is it very dependent on the region? Well, as opposed to what we just heard uh, take place in Hong Kong, in the last two and a half to three months, when the lockdown was uh, was in place, uh, well, people were very, very strict because it was strictly enforced by the local administration, inviting fines and penalties as well. But now, even when you go out onto the streets and you drive around, you see uh, what many experts are calling lockdown fatigue. People are slowly losing their guard, which we would have seen, say, about a month or two back. And that is where the real worry is. You see people not being as cautious, not being as careful as the economy also opens up. Uh, there are some states in India which have been forced to enforce their own individual lockdown for brief periods of time, like the eastern states, some southern states, because many are saying that the southern states really are powering this surge that we've seen in coronavirus cases in recent times. But there is no overall plan at the moment on part of the government to impose a similar lockdown that we saw take place in March for nearly two and a half months, because the Indian economy has also been severely suffering. We saw the plight of the migrant laborers. Many people continue to lose jobs. The Indian economy is growing at its slowest, really, and uh, the uh, several international agencies have predicted uh, uh, that the economy will be contracting by uh, nearly 4.5% uh, this year. Arunade, thank you for joining us from Delhi with that. Joe